we call it an ordination, but we are doing what the New Testament practice is, is of uh, uh, recognizing and appointing him. And we're going to pray in just a minute to ask the Spirit of God uh, to, uh, to work, continue to work in his life and to bless him and help him in the shepherding uh, of the flock as God has called him. All right, so Doug, would you come and join me up, up front, please? And Megan, if you'd like to come too, you may come and stand next to him. Uh, that, would be, that would be fine. And uh, I have a number of uh, questions for you. And uh, first a statement and then the questions that you will respond uh, affirmatively. Doug Tapp and the church is the family of God. It's the body of Christ, and the church is the temple of the Holy Spirit. All of us in this family are called to make Christ known as Savior and Lord and to share in the renewing of the world around us. Now, Doug, you are called to work as a pastor and as a teacher, together with the elders, the deacons, the fellow pastors of Grace Community Church, and to take your share in the ministry of the church and the gospel. As pastor, it will be your task to proclaim by word and deed the gospel of Jesus Christ, and to fashion your life in accordance with its precepts. You are to love and serve the people among whom you work, caring alike for the young and the old, the strong and the weak, the rich and the poor, the pleasant and the difficult. You are to preach, to declare God's forgiveness to the penitent and to the sinners, to pronounce God's blessing and to perform the pastoral ministries that have been entrusted to you. In all that you do, you are to nourish Christ's people from the riches of His grace and strengthen them to glorify God in this life and in the life to come. My brother, do you believe that you are truly called by God and His church to be a pastor? I do. Do you now in the presence of the church commit yourself to this trust and responsibility? I do. Will you respect and be guided by the pastoral direction and leadership of the elders of Grace Community Church? I will. Will you be diligent in the reading and the study of the Holy Scriptures and in seeking the knowledge of such things as will make you stronger and more to be a more able minister of Christ? Will you undertake to be a faithful pastor to all who are called, you are called to serve, laboring together with them and with your fellow ministers to build up the family and the body of Christ? Will you do your best to pattern your life in accordance with the teachings of Christ so that you will be a wholesome example to the people? Will you persevere in prayer, both in public and in private, asking for God's grace, both for yourself and for others, offering all your labors to God through the mediation of Jesus Christ and in the sanctification of the Holy Spirit? May the Lord, who has given you the will to do these things, give you the grace and power to perform them. Amen. All right, at this time I'm going to uh, invite... Um, the elders to come, and also two uh, special people this morning that are going to pray with us, and we're all going to pray together, but uh, uh, Doug's father um, is going to join us as well. Uh, Bill, where are you? Please come on up here. And uh, Willie Batson, please come up and join us as well. But before we pray... Um, We also have our, our uh, elders and one of our deacons with us this morning. And um, so, go ahead and get it right now. Now, before we, we pray, we're going to anoint up the oil. And uh, in just a moment, I'm going to have you all stand and stretch your hands out as well. Um, but Doug's father is going to pray first. And I think that's a very significant um, Because Doug's father knows Doug better than probably anyone. <laughs> well, maybe except for his mom, I think, right? Uh, and uh, Doug's father this morning, um, even 
this morning said to me that his whole, Doug's whole life, he just had the call of God on, it, on his life. And his father's been able to recognize that. And so his dad's going to lead us off in our prayer this morning. The second one is uh, Willie Batson. Uh, Willie was um, Doug's pastor when Doug was like this tall. And uh, rumor has it that, um, that Doug used to go around and say that he was going to be Willie Batson, or he was Willie Batson. <laughs> uh, Pastor Willie, that's right. Uh, Pastor Willie is who, and I think we even have pictures somewhere of him pretending that he's Pastor Willie preaching as a small child. And I think it's fitting for, uh, for Pastor Willie Batson to, to also pray uh, with him. And then finally, we'll finish this morning our prayer with uh, our elders and, uh, and one of our deacons who are close friends with Doug and myself, of course, um, recognizing God's uh, work in his life and, uh, and recognizing his giftedness and his calling to be pastor of our church. All right. Would you all please stand now, stretch forth your own hands um, in this direction, if you will, and uh, join with us as we, uh, as we pray in my Doug. There shall be showers of blessing. Send them upon us today. Grant to us now a refreshing. Come and now honor thy word. Lord, this is our beloved Son, who you have called from the cradle to minister you to you and to honor your word. Lord, as light is needed in the dark days ahead, I pray, Lord, that your word will be in his mind, in his heart, and upon his lips, and that you will protect him and his family from evil that you will give them blessings and that you will give him wisdom and grace and strength. We know, Lord, that your word says that evil men shall wax worse and worse and we know that the days are growing darker and your coming is at hand. Help him to prepare men to meet you so that they do not pass through the tribulation and the horrors to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we recognize today that before Doug was formed in the womb of his mother, that you knew him. You knew of this day. You knew of the plan that you had for his life and the calling. And over the years, it has been a joy and a blessing to see that in his life. To see how throughout every stage of his life he has had a heart for you a desire to serve you a willingness to be challenged a willingness to grow a willingness to seek out your truth in your word and to apply it to his life and to teach it to others and today we rejoice in this setting apart of Doug Tappan for this ministry to which you have called him and I pray that your blessing, the power of your Holy Spirit, would be upon him in ways that he has yet to experience, that the gospel will flow from his lips and his life as Jesus is in his heart, and that you would protect him from the enemy that would seek to destroy him, that he would be a man of God, he would be a lover of his wife and children, that he would be one who shepherds your flock with humility and with strength and with courage. And that, Father, you would continue to guide in his life. We just are so excited about what you have done and what you're doing and how you will use him, and especially here in Farmington, as he serves you. And so today, Father, we rejoice in your hand upon him, your plan for his life. And we, we just join with him in serving you and giving thanks to you for what you've done through him and in him. God, we just, uh, right now, today, Lord, we recognize and have recognized for 
some time that you have your hand upon Doug Tapp. Yes. Lord, today we officially install him, Lord, as a pastor here at Grace Community Church, recognizing, Lord, your hand of blessing upon him. We ask that you would fill him, Lord, with your spirit from the top of his head to the yes. soles of his Thank feet, you, Lord, that you would use yes. him, Father, yes. for your glory in this church, yes. that lives would be changed and saved, souls saved, Lord, and yes. marriages healed, yes. and people transformed by the power of the gospel as Doug steps up to the pulpit. Yes. Lord, we recognize this. We bless him today, Lord. And we ask that you would surround him with your guardian angels and see to it, Lord, from this day forward that he is controlled by your spirit. In yes. Jesus' name, amen. Lord, you are the mind and we are the branches, Lord. We pray that uh, you continue to prune and you uh, prune him, Lord, uh, that you would... Uh, Hold him, shake him, yes. and form him like clay, Lord, mm. the way you want him to be, Lord. Mm. Lord, I pray that you would fill him with the Holy Spirit, that he would glorify you and honor you always. All the days of his life. Yes. 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 Amen. And Father, we do thank you this morning for this the affirmation of your work in Doug's life. And we thank you that we are all part of this together as the body of Christ. And we give you praise this morning uh, for this special day. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. I'll have a have a seat. I wanted to uh, say a couple things. Don't worry, I'll be brief. This is not an award, and I don't mean to sound like this is some sort of awards speech. So just bear with me. Uh, I'm grateful for your support. Those of you who have come, uh, it's special to be here, or we're just here. Uh, every week, I'm grateful uh, for that. Um, there's a few people in particular that I want to thank. Um, my wife, Megan. Uh, are you cheering because she has to put up with something? Are you? <laughs> She gets the award. <laughs> Maybe we should pray for her. <laughs> My wife, Megan, who challenges me and pushes me to be a better uh, man, and father, and uh, Christian, I love you. To my uh, family, all of whom is here, or many of whom are here today, uh, you've all shaped me whether you know it or not, uh, especially to my parents, I would not be the man that I am today were it not for how you raised me. And I am grateful for your sacrifice, for my upbringing, for my education, and I'm grateful for that. To all of you who are part of this church, I cannot tell you what an honor it is to serve here. I've seen many different church backgrounds. Um, this is by far the best. I promise you that. Um, and to the staff, uh, pastors that I serve with, it is a true honor. I cannot uh, thank you for putting up with me, first of all, <laughs> in my morning semi-moodiness until I get my coffee down. <laughs> I would not want to work with anyone else. Pastor Bernie, whom I've known for too many years to calculate on the spot, <laughs> I'm proud to serve under you and I wouldn't have it any other way. So, 
Please don't be deceived this morning into thinking that my calling is higher than yours. It is not. We are all, we all share an equal calling from God. Yours is different from mine. But for those of you who work in, in the trades or in an office or wherever it is or in a home taking care of children, we share an equal calling from God. And so today, my invitation is just that you continue to journey with me as we seek to be more like Jesus and to reach uh, this community that so needs the love and saving power of Jesus. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. And uh, a tradition that was started when Pastor Glenn and I were ordained um, is a top. And the way it was explained and passed on to us was that uh, now that you're an ordained pastor, um, you don't get a crown and you don't get a scepter or a special ring that people kiss. You get a servant's <laughs> towel, uh, symbolic of the calling of God uh, and being a servant of the church. Why don't you stand with me now? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to celebrate communion together, and uh, and then before we dismiss our service. All right. So if the worship team could join me up here, and uh, those who are going to be serving communion, and Pastor Doug, would you please uh, lead us in our our time of communion this morning? 